Hello, uh, and welcome to Sermon and Song from First United Methodist Church in Conway, Arkansas, uh, built upon our in-person uh, worship services each week. With this service, we continue our series, Daily Bread for Hungry Hearts, uh, based on the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Pastor Didi will be preaching, uh, inviting us to receive the bread of life uh, and embody uh, this blessing uh, that God gives. Uh, after the sermon, members of our choir will, will inspire us with a song entitled, All My Hope uh, in God is Founded. Friends, whatever brings you here today, we welcome you. Uh, and we invite you to explore the blessings uh, uh, of being a part of this congregation uh, through our website uh, at conwayfumc.org. Now let me start, start our worship off uh, with a prayer. Holy God, open our hearts to your word, to your grace. Make us hungry for your life-giving love and make us mindful of all who are in need this day. May blessings of healing and guidance, forgiveness and grace come through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to hear these words from the scripture in John 6, 35, 41 through 51. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The word of the Lord. Food is love to me. Some of my earliest memories involve eating. And in fact, if I close my eyes, I can imagine myself as a toddler sitting in my grandmother's lap at her kitchen table. She has her arm around my middle and she is whispering something in my ear as she offers me a silver spoon full of homemade grape jelly. The jelly she made from the grapes that grew on the arbor between our two houses. The memory is sweet, both of the jelly and of being completely and utterly loved. In our gospel lesson this morning, we hear Jesus say again, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. If we ever doubted that salvation has something to do with our physical as well as our spiritual hunger, Jesus' insistence that he is water for the thirsty and bread for the hungry and the rooted vine that will save the dying tendril challenges those assumptions. Jesus has come to save us utterly from the core of our being to the tips of our toes. I am, he says, the bread of life. Last week, 
Pastor Michael reminded us how offensive Jesus' use of the phrase, I am, was to many in the crowd who were following him. Ego ami is the Greek translation of that ancient name for God, the name that Jesus used for himself. So it's no wonder that as we pick up the story today, we see Jesus in conflict all over again. It is, after all, one thing to feed a crowd of hungry people, but it is quite another to claim to do it because you are God. And even more, that you are following God's highest prophetic teachings, that God loves those not quite able to pull themselves up by their bootstraps or meet their own needs. No, the prophet said that God comes to the aid of the last, the least, and the lost, and Jesus is claiming to be intimately related to this intimate, loving God who is never satisfied with mere thoughts and prayers. I am comes in flesh and blood, in water, in bread, and wine. God can be heard and seen. God reaches out. God embraces. God heals. God feeds. God saves. Knowing this God is not just a matter of thinking right thoughts or getting our beliefs in right order. This God, our God, wants a relationship with us, a personal relationship with us. Jesus offers bread, but this bread that he offers is more than flour and yeast and water and salt. This bread is Jesus himself. Feed on me, he says, and never be hungry again. Cultivate a taste for what I am offering, and you will be abundantly satisfied. Now, these are luminous promises, poetically true, and yet for some of us, sometimes they are just beyond what we can grasp, even when we know they are real. For all of us who practice the faith know that even with a deeply personal relationship with Christ, there are times of longing for answers and a spiritual emptiness that can sit on us like a weight. Many were shocked years ago when Mother Teresa's memoir was published and she disclosed that for years at a time she had experienced a deep longing for a joyful feeling of intimacy with Christ. Yet often, she would feel alone. She wanted Christ to be her constant companion, but he did not always come to her in the ways that she wanted him to. She didn't always feel like he heard her prayers. She didn't feel his presence every time she received Eucharist. Instead, the place she most often encountered him was in the face of the dying he had sent her to serve. Again and again, she remembered holding Christ in her arms when she looked into the depth of human suffering and labored with a stranger who was taking their last burdened breath. It was not easy to be the spouse of a demanding Lord, yet in all her life she could not imagine anything more satisfying or fulfilling than her life in Christ. He was her joy. 
and she did find intimacy as they shared in ministry to the least of humankind. And there, on the streets of Calcutta, her soul was healed as she worked with Christ to heal others. A relationship with Jesus as he describes himself in the scriptures today requires us to be willing to get out of our heads and let him into our hearts. As the psalmist saying, taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus said, feed on me. <laughs> this sounds strange, but if we think about it just for a moment, it really isn't. Not if you've ever shared a wonderful meal with family or friends where the food was excellent and it filled your belly beyond its capacity straight into the core of your soul. Most families, I think, practice a ritual of sacred meals. The menu is often passed from generation to generation and the recipes named for the foremothers who blessed us with them. Mamaw's sweet potato pie, Aunt Katie's party bread, Grandma's grape jelly. We gather round tables and we feast on food that is more nourishing and life-giving than the sum of the ingredients. Because baked into that pie, or stirred up in the bread, or spread with the jelly, is the presence of love. Sweet and savory and life-giving love from those who cooked for us, sacrificed for us, and his, in whose memory we gather to feast. We see in each other the face of those who have loved us well. Now imagine Jesus. Jesus who served the multitude's bread. Jesus who met their demands for more with an invitation. I and bread, the life you long for. Jesus said, I love you completely in your need. I will give you abundance beyond your wildest dreams. Jesus said, in me is plenty for you and for all. And I will teach you to be bread too. Then Jesus stretched out his arms and wrapped us all in his embrace. Come to the table, he whispers, for I, I am what you crave. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We're so glad you were here to worship with us today, and we pray again that God's blessings may be upon you. So receive this word of benediction as we prepare to end our time together. May the God of hope surround you with steadfast love, and may Christ himself, the bread of life, Satisfy your deepest longings. And may you be filled with the knowledge and the hope and the assurance of God's great and unending love for you so that peace may abound in your life, in your home, and in your work. Amen.